This week, unfortunately, I have to kick off with a sweater warning. I know that a lot of you like to watch this in bed with the lights off while your lover isn't paying attention. I'm about to blast your eyeballs with a very white sweater, and I just wanted to let you know so you're prepared for it to happen. In three, two, one, white sweater. <music> You ever hear someone say, I was gonna say. Like someone makes a funny joke and then someone else says, I was gonna say. And then they say the same thing again that we just heard, but worse. Look, like imagine, imagine the break room in the office and someone walks in with a mug that's too big or something. And someone's like, someone cool is like, hey, nice little baby mug. And that's funny because it's ironic. It's not a little baby mug. It's a giant mug. Everybody laughs. And then someone else is like, I was going to say, that's a big mug. And then there's like three seconds of silence. <laughs> I was, <laughs> was going to say, I noticed, I, I was going to say, <laughs> I noticed that was big too. But why did you, why did you need to do that? We had our laughter. We had our moment. I don't think there's ever been laughter in recorded history after a sentence that began with, I was gonna say. I, I was gonna say, to me, represents a failure to adapt. You weren't able to adapt. You were dead set on making that observation and hoping that people would laugh at your joke. Or just acknowledge you? I don't know. I realize that's a weird end to this episode, but I wanna talk about adapting. I wanna talk about Housemark, who just made Returnal. So Housemark, is on the map, baby. Pull out your maps. They're there. Which isn't to say they were invisible before. This is the studio that made Super Stardust HD, Nex Machina, Rezogun. They are just definitely at a different tier now. Just that, you know, that Guerrilla Games leap. Just, oh, you are a different kind of studio. You're part of a different conversation now. And that's happened very suddenly. I would say even at the beginning of this year, I'm looking at Returnal, I'm like, I don't... No. And we are here where we are now, where, hey, if they say they're AAA, they've kind of proven it. it. They have adapted. They have become a different kind of video game studio. I find that fascinating. That's why I want to make a video about them today. So an important part about this whole story is essentially a blog post made by Housemark's CEO, Ilari Kuitinen, um, on their website titled Arcade is Dead. This happened in 2017. This was two months after the release of Next Machina and one week after the release of... Oh... Matterfall. All right, if you remembered, if you remember the name Matterfall, pat yourself on the back. Quick tip, quick tip, quick tip, quick tip, quick tip, quick tip, quick tip. If you're, if you're making a video game right now, don't put fall at the end of its title. Don't even... It's not cool. Anyway, this is, well, this was 2017. Let's go back to this letter. Okay, so, not a letter, a blog post. Not a blog post, a statement? It's a blog, it's a blog post. So basically, Housemark was in this position where Next Machina is the best possible arcade type game they believed they could make or could be made. And because it did not perform well, did not sell well, they came out to say, we're abandoning the genre forever. Bye-bye. The types of games we've been making for the last 20 years, not doing that anymore. Because this is not a viable platform. It read a lot like a Facebook post where someone's announcing that they're leaving Facebook. You know, it's, it, you, didn't feel, you didn't feel sorry for them, but it's interesting looking at this today uh, this was the right decision, obviously, to abandon that, that genre, I guess. One year later, we got another post. And by the way, I, I didn't, I remember Arcade is Dead. And going to this website now, I'm seeing that there were a lot more updates in between that are kind of fun. Jumping on the bandwagon from Arcade is Dead to AAA. I kind of believe that that headline, Arcade is Dead, probably got a lot of clicks. Like, they probably saw web traffic here. Anyway... This is where we see the first hints at AAA development. 
a new unannounced IP. How exciting. Also in this post is, is a mention of Storm Divers, which seemed to dismay our fans as many thought that we were jumping on the Battle Royale bandwagon. However, we initiated this project back in early 2015 and started prototyping with a small team after finishing Alienation during the summer of 2016. Storm Divers is, and I was gonna say. Storm Divers is Housemark walking into the break room going, I, I was gonna say, <laughs> I was go I was gonna say, I was gonna say, Storm Divers. Too late. It was too late. It, it was too late for Storm Divers. I don't believe that game ever had a shot. The Battle Royale bandwagon is interesting in that there are four successes total. Everything else has been a failure. I think, okay, so Call of Duty, I think we gotta count as one. Technically, there's Blackout and Warzone. I'm counting it as one. There is Fortnite, there is Player Unknown's Battleground, and there is Apex Legends. And that is it. I won't hear an argument for the Ubisoft. I won't hear an argument for any other Battle Royale games. You can have your own spin. You really can. Apex Legends proved, like, if your spin is good enough, if you are differentiating yourself enough, you can find space in the Battle Royale market. Really, Storm Divers is, it, it is such an I was gonna say. And just two years later, January of 2020, we get the announcement that Storm Divers is on ice because we're focused on delivering our most ambitious and biggest game to date. So, so we, we're already moving on from Storm Divers, but January 2020 still haven't announced Returnal, which is exciting. Um, I think that happens a few months after this post, um, but they're feeling confident in whatever this AAA game is. So one and a half years later, we get this headline. Housemark's next awesome arcade action game releases tomorrow. Arcade was never dead. <laughs> and this is not just a Returnal hype piece. There's actually some very candid history in here, in this post. Um, again, these are from Ilari, the CEO. Our multiplayer PvP prototype, talking about Storm Divers there, uh, seemed at the time as a necessary experiment as the industry seemed to have moved on from single player games towards multiplayer games. We were thinking that if we didn't have anything to show on that front, we might be out of business very soon as we wouldn't be able to sell any projects to publishers anymore. So I think it's very unusual for a CEO of a studio to be that open with us. Um, but also that was just a few years ago. It was just a few years ago, they're on the, the ropes here saying, man, if we don't have a multiplayer game, we're dead out here, buddy. And just beneath that, we were hoping that our self-published Next Machina would allow us to have at least a bit of financial freedom to enable us to continue developing great arcade fast-paid shoot-em-up experiences. But as we know, that didn't happen either. So on the eve before Returnal's release, the CEO of Housemark is willing to come out here and say, basically everything is riding on this game. <laughs> Though, if you're a PlayStation exclusive, I think you're supported a little bit. So it's not like, how do I, I don't mean this is the kind of, you have a little more financial freedom. <laughs> you have a little bit of money in your pocket from Sony, presumably. I mean, uh, in the age when game publishers are taking less and less creative risks, we are truly thankful to our publishing partner, Sony, who has given us an opportunity to work on something very risky and has given fantastic support during the whole project. We are forever grateful for having this opportunity. Which is cool. It's cool. It's cool, especially because Sony's obsession with blockbusters is stirring unrest within the PlayStation empire. It's cool that they can do both. But I love that it has seemingly worked out. Seemingly. Housemark has adapted. And to go back to this horrible analogy, that's not even that particularly funny. If somebody uses your joke, if you're about to say, I was gonna say, if you're about to do that, bail on I was gonna say. Don't, don't say I was gonna say. But also, you don't have to leave this conversation entirely and shut up for two minutes. You just adapt. You yes and that puppy. That's a funny joke. Somebody laughed at it. We work with that joke. 
we use that joke. <laughs> we, we add to it. We put our twist on it. So Returnal is not an I was gonna say. Returnal is, in fact, joking around in the same room as Hades. We, you have to draw that comparison. Yes, there's lots of roguelikes. Oh, uh, really quick, really quick, really quick, really quick. I don't want to talk about roguelite. I don't want to talk about that word. Basically, that word exists because uh, some games are roguelike, but not roguelike enough to be roguelike. You know, your progress carries over a little too much. It's not as hardcore as a roguelike. It, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. It is still like rogue. Roguelike. All we're saying is like that. Roguelike. It's not rogue. Okay? It is roguelike. So Returnal isn't making the exact same joke Hades is. It's not even possible the way that they were developed. But also it is so different. It's obviously, I think you have to bring up Hades just because Hades is a good point of comparison. Like, how is it different? How is it alike? Returnal is, to me, conceptually, such a good use of the skill set of Housemark, the passions of Housemark. We like these kinds of games and applying it to this triple A framework of what we expect games to look and sound like and cutscenes to story and voice acting. It is smart. <laughs> It's smart. It's they read the road and they just played it perfectly, I would say. Um, if this game was not a roguelike, right? If you didn't have runs, if it was simply a Metroidvania where the layout of the worlds is predetermined and every time you die, you keep all your stuff, we wouldn't be talking about this game today. It is such an interesting success. You know, it's, it's a team I wasn't necessarily rooting for. You know, the sassy like, we... <laughs> We give up on Arcade! <laughs> okay, we're doing AAA now, and then they come up with this? Okay, <laughs> I have to give it up to you. It's worth remarking on. You know, this was the moment Housemark became a different kind of studio. And uh, uh, there's something exciting about that to me. And that is the episode for this week. I'll be back for more delayed input this time next week. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. Okay, for the bonus segment this week, I wanted to have a conversation that I didn't want to have. <laughs> I basically, I cut it out of the episode and I'm like, I, we, should still, we should still talk about this. So I'm spawning a brand new segment called Baby, I Don't Want to Talk About This. You don't want to talk about it. <laughs> All right, so next gen games cost $70 in US dollars. And I realize a big chunk of this audience doesn't even touch US dollars, I know, but hopefully this all kind of makes sense. It's the easiest way for me to talk about it because they are nice, clean, chunky numbers. That price hike sucks. It sucks. It's not even like worth, you know what I mean? It's not even worth making a video about how it sucks. It is, I know a lot of people are like, well, inflation, it makes sense. Things, but like, Inflation sucks. Inflation, things are costing more, more rapidly than salaries are going up, in the US at least. And unfortunately, the dawn of a new console generation is the perfect time to make such a price hike, because you can't do it in the middle. The way human minds work, the way... <laughs> because we know, you know what? You know I know. The way human's mind works is like, we can actually rationalize it. We can, even though this generation is the smallest, tiniest little leap over what we had previously between other console generations, it's, if you show me a screenshot, it's imperceptible, you know? Even though it's the tiniest one, a human mind is able to rationalize, I should pay more for a PlayStation 5 game than a PlayStation 4 game. 5 is greater than 4. 70 is greater than 60. It's the time to do it, right? You will get pushback, obviously, but you can't do it later. You, it will take... 10 more years through the price hike. So now feasibly is the best time to make such a thing happen. There's also what I'm thinking about in relation to Returnal is it had this unfortunate thing of having to be worth $70. It's part of the conversation of the game because Housemark is a, is a studio that never made a $60 game, you know? So it's like, okay, here's your seven. You, you think you're worth 70 and it is. And it is absolutely worth 70. And so this is sort of this weird turn. I don't think this will become part of Returnal's legacy, but I think it is part, like, spoken legacy. You know, I don't think we'll look back at Returnal and think like, oh, that was kind of, 
the first real $70 game? You know, I don't think we'll think of it that way. But I can see this turning with Ratchet and Clank coming soon. I can see within a year, like one year from now, if a next gen game is $60, there will be people being like, what's wrong with it? Why is it 60? Is it not as next gen? Because we don't, we know how people work. We know how minds work. You, you, you have begun to associate next gen with $70 or of course, whatever currency you use. And that is irreversible. This ball is rolling. And I don't, and I don't have a conclusion for this. I don't, I don't know, I don't have a nice spin on it. That's why this is a part of baby I don't want to talk about this. Let's not talk about this again, okay? <laughs> Games, let's just leave $70 out of the conversation because it's such a like, $70 can be different to anybody, you know? Even two people with the exact same apartment and the exact same job, you know, exact same cat that lives with them. $70 means a completely different thing to both those people, you know? It's just something that's not fun to talk about. I think it is part of the conversation of Returnal. We'll just leave it here. Leave it right there. Pack it up. Baby, I don't want to talk about this. Okay? Don't ever unbox this box.